Red handed rule. All right, so you want to try to draw a right hand in this shape right here. So if you suck at drawing, just keep watching and I'll draw it very easily. I think I draw it better on the board. Oh, this shouldn't have bubble out like that at the bottom. I don't know. That's it, right? Yeah. Thank you. I've only been doing it for five years. The thumb's a little bit, a little bit wide at the bottom. <laughs> it's like a shark fin. So this would take away the, this is just strip it down to three vectors and this is what it looks like. So I tried to show, so we got a u, a v, u cross v. So I was trying to draw both independently u and v. The u is perpendicular to u cross v and v is perpendicular to u cross v. Or I should say orthogonal, use the grown up word. So we can write it like that with upside down T orthogonal notation. <laughs> I don't like this for the definition. Let's go, let's use the IJK determinant definition. Uh, so how can I choose different definitions? Basically, if things are equivalent, you could just say, well, I'm going to use this equivalent for the this equivalent um, statement for the definition. So that's how you can basically say, oh, this is the definition. So we'll go u cross v is the determinant of IJK matrix where you got u1 u2, u3, v1, v2, v3. Of course, u1, u2, u3 are the three components for u, and then v1, v2, v3, three components for v. So what this means, this is very specifically only in three-dimensional space. So you cannot take the cross product of two vectors in two-dimensional space or two vectors in four-dimensional space. There may be some analogous things that have similar properties, but uh, the actual cross product only is only in three-dimensional space. We'll do a computation example at some point here. All right, we have another sine uh, relationship. So sine theta is u cross v, uh, magnitude of u cross v, divided by magnitude u times magnitude v. So there's another way to relate the angle with a cross product this time. So why, why would this not make any sense? Oh, well, you know, before I say that, I should say what, a cross, what the actual cross product is. So cross product is a vector. Most of you already knew that from pre-cal 2. So cross product, you take two vectors, cross them, you get a third vector. 
A third vector is orthogonal to u and v. So you got u and v, and you cross them, you get a vector that is orthogonal. So the best way to think about it, think about u and v spanning a plane. So as long as they're not parallel, they would span a plane. You know, the problem with their parallel is they, uh, there could be infinite planes that they live inside of. So if they're not parallel, then you just think of laying a uh, you know, piece of paper on top of your two fingers. And that would be the plane they span. And then your normal is going to go straight up out of the plane. And what happens if you ch change your fingers, the U and V fingers, so you want to sw swap them, but you don't want to flick people off? So when I say swap them, what happens if you swap from here to here? <laughs> you flick people <laughs> off. So when I say swap, without flicking people off, you have to use your wrist and your elbow and your arm. So U and V, I want to swap them <laughs> like that. Unfortunately, everybody watching at home can't see my hand, but you want to rotate, basically rotate your wrist 180 degrees, which will flip your thumb up to the other side. Yeah, that's hard to explain without a visual. <laughs> but all of you can see my hand. Take your hand and flip them around. So try to think of where U and V are. That's why I'm using my other fingers to sort of keep track of U and V. And then I'm trading what fingers are touching. So it flips your thumb over, basically, uh, which will be a very important property. So if you cr do a cross product in the opposite order, it will take your normal and go uh, upside down with your normal. So it'll flip your normal over. All right, parallel vectors, we saw this before. Uh, definition for parallel vectors. All right, parallel vectors, let's think about the angle between them. What is the angle between these parallel vectors? Zero. Zero. There's another way for vectors to be parallel or anti-parallel, depending on who you talk to. So we got theta equals zero. What is our theta if they're anti-parallel? There we go. And we'll write it as pi. All right, what is sine of zero? Zero. What is sine of pi? Zero. So either way, parallel or anti-parallel, if you cross them, just think about the uh, sine relationship. You're going to get zero for the cross product. So your numerator would have to be zero. So we can write u is parallel to v if and only if u cross v equals. Now to be careful, not the number 0. And I can be very specific because it's got to be in three dimensions. So it's not going to be a two-dimensional 0 vector. I'll just write out the 0, 0, 0 vector. So have I done enough math notation for this sentence that I just wrote down to make sense? Yes. They're parallel exactly when cross product is the zero vector. Ooh, I should put a little quantifier. Let's exclude the uh, case where you got zero vectors. It doesn't really make sense to talk about parallel, anti-parallel if your vector doesn't point anywhere. If there's no direction with it, uh, parallel is a pretty useless thing to say. All right, properties. These are going to be algebraic properties. So we'll get vectors u, v, w. And now I'm not going to say they're in Rn. For a cross product, it's got to be three dimensions. So I can get very specific. It better be three dimensional or cross product won't make any sense. And we'll go alpha, beta will be scalars. So we got vectors here and scalars over there. So first we'll look at the scalar. Multiplication of one vector, you could move that scalar outside, do your cross product, and multiply at the end. 
or you could move your scaler to the right side also. So you can move scalers around just like top products. So go in red with a warning right here. What is it very tempting to do? Alpha U cross alpha V. Factor out the alpha. Let's look at the way the rules work though. I can bring, so I'll, I'll deal with the first the alpha on the left first. So I'll bring the, so looking at this, the alpha times uh, U, I'll just bring that first alpha outside. And I should be more specific uh, because scalar multiplication and cross product multiplication, there's not really a, a precedence of which one you do first. There's not really a PEMDAS. And I haven't spent much time thinking about order uh, of operations for cross products. And now I'm going to use the third property, cross product property. So I'm going to move the alpha scalar out front again. So now we have alpha times alpha <laughs> times u cross v. And now we have scalar times a scalar times a vector. And I can reassociate and say this is alpha squared times u cross v. Maybe I shouldn't use red, because what I'm writing is true. Um, this is what I wanted to write in red, right there. So if you bring alpha outside, it comes out squared in this case. All right, so that's some bad math right there. So don't do that. So any questions about what, I, what I'm talking about? You can't factor an alpha out, is what I'm saying. You could bring each alpha out individually, but you can't factor them both out. They would come out as an alpha squared. That's completely different if there was a plus in the middle. And I totally factor alpha out, no problem. But it's not a plus, it's not addition. They call it product for a reason, because it acts like a product. Oh, here's a way to make you less confused. So x is just regular x, the scalar. What's 3x times 3x? Is that 3x squared? 9x squared. So you write it as 3 squared x squared. So there you go. Regular product with the scalar in it. Much happier? Excellent. Mission accomplished. Those are our first properties. Second property, we saw by flipping our fingers, so taking U and V, your U, V fingers, and changing them around. So you change the order that you cross product, you get negative. So it'll take your normal that was pointing up. If you started in the, the way I started with my end, it will, will go point down. So it'll go from whatever normal to negative normal. So zero vector cross u is going to be the zero vector. So those are vectors right there. What do you think I can do with the cross product with a sum? Why do we call it a product? This is the entire reason we call it a product. Yeah, you get to distribute, so it acts like a product. Now it's important that you get the order right, because u cross v is not the same as v cross u. So this is definitely not the same as uh, v plus w cross u. So you can't switch the order around. 
So multiplying on the right side is very different than multiplying it. Cross product on the right side is different than cross product on the left side. You would get negative. So I'll just erase that. You don't really need that. You can cross it out if you're writing in pen. So because of this, I have to have a whole entire separate rule for distribution on the other side. So this last one is definitely way more obscure. I completely didn't know this one. Not intuitive. We'd probably have to work pretty hard to prove this one. So it's a strange, you can turn a cross product of a cross product into subtraction with dot products. I don't remember using this last one very often. So area of a parallelogram with size u and v. So you have some vector u, some other vector v. We'll make a parallelogram. There's only one parallelogram to make with these as the sides, you got to go parallel with V, parallel with U. So you make it like this. I want to know what is the area inside. You do a cross product and look at the magnitude. That's our area. Area of a triangle. Size U and V. There's only one way to make a triangle because triangles have three sides. There's only one side missing. And we'll connect it like that. So I want to know what is the area right here. It turns out if you keep on going with your geometrical constructions, you could make a parallelogram. And these two triangles are similar or congruent. If you just flip one of them over, it'll end up on the other one. And I think if you rotate around that point, that little blue point that I made right there, that's where you're, you'll have symmetry about, about that point I just wrote right there. You better rotate it. Anyway, so that means the area is half the parallelogram area. So let's do an example now. So the most important, probably one of the most important properties is the cross product definition up here somewhere. So if you did well in pre-calculus two, you may not need to put this on your cheat sheet. If you remember from pre-cal 2, hopefully at some point it'll become second nature. So I'm going to use that definition for this example problem. So our vector u will be 2, 1, 1. And v, negative 4, 3, 1. So you got IJK, make sure you put U first, V second. And we're going to do row expansion on the first row. So we get I times the determinant of the matrix with column I and row I removed. So I want to think about row I cover up row I, so forget that row and that column, and we get 1, 1, 2, 
131. Now, the slightly tricky thing to remember is minus j, it alternates signs. i minus j plus k. So I'll write a big, bold, negative sign, negative j. Now we have to cover up. I circled row 1 because we're going across row 1. Now we're going to eliminate column 2, the j column. So we got 2, 1, negative 4, 3. Yes. And the only thing you need to finish this is the 2 by 2 determinant. Anybody want to impress us with your 2 by 2 determinant memory? AD minus BC. Oh, there you go. AD minus BC. So you go. You multiply diagonals and then you subtract. You need to remember which one you subtract on. But hopefully you've done this enough that you just know how to do it. All right, so go ahead and fill in the last matrix there for K and compute the numbers you get. So you should be answering with a three-dimensional vector. Any questions on this cross product here? Okay, moving on, we will find a vector normal or orthogonal to the plane containing three points. I should say find a normal vector Our points, point A will be 1, negative 1, 0. Point B will be 2, 1, negative 1. Negative 1, 1, 2. All right, so I'm going to graph out points A, B, and C. They are where I drew them. I have no idea. None whatsoever. But what did I say about graphic in three dimensions? It's ambiguous. You're basically wasting your time if you carefully graph them out for the most part. So I recommend don't spend time graphing in three dimensions overall. It's pretty much a waste of time. All right, a plan containing these points. All right. So. One thing we can do 
is find some vectors. So I will just call that u and v. So how do I find a u? There we go. N minus start, b minus a. How about v? C minus a. All right. So what is, obviously the section is called cross product. So shocker, we're going to use cross product. Gram Schmidt orthogonalization? Not in this problem. Not in this class, I don't think either. That's linear algebra. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Which we're sort of we're sort of doing now. Yeah. Alright. Draw U cross V. Uh oh. Did I mess this up? I think the normal will look like it's going down. U is the first finger, V is the second finger. It looks like I should draw my normal going down, the way I label U and V. <coughs> All right, so those are supposed to be 90 degree marks right there, or right angle marks. So independently, U is orth orthogonal to U cross V, and V is orthogonal to U cross V, and this is going to be our normal. So that's our normal right there. Oh, come on. So if you want a more stylized picture of what's going on, Here's the parallelogram containing U and V. And that's a good way to think about a plane, is a parallelogram. Of course, a plane is an infinite parallelogram, goes forever, uh, all directions. Normal, some, well, any point in the plane you want, the normal, usually we draw it as going up out of the plane. That being said, if you rotated your camera around, you could very well draw it going down out of the plane, depending on how you change your view around. And we get lazy and just draw one right angle, which means it's orthogonal to everything in the plane, or it's orth orthogonal to the plane itself. So we know everything to compute this. All we need to do is figure out what is b minus a, what is c minus a, and then cross product. So go ahead and do that now. Find b minus a, and then c minus a, and then take their u and v and take their cross product. I'll give you a one minute head start. We'll see who wins.
Alright, if you're finished, make sure I'm not making mistakes. And then be sure I'm making the mistake, not you, before you say something. <laughs> All right, 606. All right, so why did I say in the problem, find a normal vector to the plane? There's a lot. There's infinite. I can multiply this by any number that's not 0, positive or negative. 0 is bad because here's what a length 0 normal looks like. It doesn't give you any information about direction. So you can't use a length 0. You're not going anywhere. So I'll say any non-zero scalar multiple is a normal vector to this plane. If I was choosing one to work with, I would probably, the two best ones will probably be 1, 0, 1 or 1 over square root 2, 0, 1 over square root 2. I think it's probably obvious why 1, 0, 1 is good. Got 1s and zeros. Why is the second one really good? It's a unit vector. So depending on what I'm doing, 6, 0, 6, those numbers are sort of arbitrary. You don't have to use the 6s. You can multiply by a sixth or 1 over square 6 square root 2 to get the last vector right there. So I'll just write, these are probably more useful, but they're not any more correct. Just depends on what you're trying to do with these. <coughs> to make grading easy, I probably would ask for the any of the two unit normal vectors. So that narrows it down to plus or minus the unit vector I wrote there. So I won't be looking at so many answers. So find the area of the triangle ABC from the previous example. So there's our ABC. We'll just turn into a triangle. Just connect up the BC points right there. So there's our little triangle. Probably zoom in on it so we can actually see it. So we got the ABC triangle right there. So what I need are two vectors on the sides. So two of the side vectors. And good news is we already computed U. We already computed V. And what do I do with them? Somewhere, we're using this area as 1 half u cross v. So we got u cross v. We just have to take the magnitude and multiply by half. Now it's important that you don't use the unit version. If you could, that means you can just multiply by basically by any scalar and say the area is whatever you want. So you want to use the cross product, not a scalar multiple of the cross product. So we're going to go with the 606. So area is 1 half u cross v, so that's 1 half magnitude 606.
So you should get 6 squared 2 over 2. Or if you want to un-rationalize denominators, which I don't feel like doing, whatever. What you don't want to do is spend your time rationalizing denominators. If you got a rational one, you don't need to unrationalize. That's a little silly. I could have used negative 606. Why do those negatives not matter? I square them right out. So you're not going to have negatives. So if I went the other v cross u, I would get um, the exact same final answer. So I'm going to skip torque. Not particularly good at it. And I think if you need it, you probably got it in physics or engineering. All right, so there's some torque stuff in your book. So if you are physics or uh, physics and engineering, I don't know who else really needs it, but if you're in that, that group, um, you may want to just read the torque section. You could probably read it without much trouble, too. So when I say skip torque, I just mean in this class, not you know, just to ignore torque in your life <laughs> if you're going into engineering. <laughs> oh, you should. I wonder what Thrivelton would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, skip torque. All right, so we're going to look at the triple scalar or box product, and why would you ever use it? So you can use this to get the volume of a parallel pipe head. <coughs> In my notes, I have it spelled as parallel piped, but I think it's pipe head. I think that has the same name. What is it? Is that a pipe head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe I'm thinking of that name and it's screwing up this one. I don't, I don't think the geometric machine is called yeah. pipe. I don't know. Hopefully, this is right. <laughs> What's that? Oh, we're in 12 4. Oh, Cross product. Since I wrote it on the board. <laughs> 12.4 cross product. 12.3 is dot product. It is. Oh, sweet. I don't trust my own spelling. Speaking of spelling correctly, I was trying to tell my friend that my internet was down. I had to call CenturyLink, and I was calling them ducking vultures because my text messaging can't curse. <laughs> oh, and yesterday is the first time I've ever said, your barn door is open, would you like me to close it? <laughs> yeah, it was wide open. Who knows? Could have been a deer walks in there and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My neighbor's barn door was open. And they were in the middle of driving down the driveway, so I yelled, I'll close your barn door open. I'll close it for you. And then their garage door was wide open as well, so I close that too. All right. So the shortcut formula, you can of course go cross product, <coughs> dot product, and then take the magnitude. That's exactly how you would compute what I just wrote. Order of operations, do what's in the parentheses, cross product first, you get another vector, 
dot product with w. Now, are these vertical bars absolute value, or are they a magnitude? Magnitude. Magnitude, because what? No. You all said this so confidently. <laughs> because their dot product turns into a scalar, so those are absolute value. So we got vector, vector. When we evaluate those two, we get scalar. And then we have vertical bars around our scalar. So that's an absolute value. So there is a vector we'll get, but we're going to do a dot product, turning it into. OK. So for the same notation, if it's a vector, you do the magnitude. And if it's a number, you do absolute value. Correct. So it just depends on what is the actual object inside. Well, either way, you're going to get a number out, regardless of if it's uh, magnitude or absolute value. But I mean, once, once you do the operations, you'll realize you have a scalar inside of there. And you'll, oh, OK, I know what it is now. All right, there's a shortcut right here, which is u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3. W1, W2, W3. So there's a shortcut right there. You could turn this into just a determinant problem. I don't want to go through the math of why this works. Although now that I said that, I'm kind of interested. I think if you swap row 1 and row 3, That'll be a good first move that makes your determinant negative. And then if you just think about ijk up there, instead of ijk, you get w1, w2, w3. So it'll be like sort of distributing your w across. I don't want to spend the time going through this. So let's do an example. There's probably a fun, proving, proving these are equal would probably be an interesting exercise. So if you want to prove they're equal, go for it. There's only nine things hanging around, so it's not going to get too, too crazy. All right, so we'll go volume of parallel pipette. The internet said we're right, so we're definitely right. The book says you're right, too. What's that? The book's right, too. Ah, OK. So you can always go to your, I'm right.com just to prove somebody else wrong. All right, we got one minute. Let's see if you can get this determinant in one minute. Let's see what you're made of. I'm not giving you a head start. So I don't think I can get this determinant in less than a minute. Always do row one expansion unless um, you're really good at determinants. It will reduce the number of errors you make. Oh, there should be an absolute value outside of the determinant. So I'm going to put a slightly larger set of vertical bars. So let's get the determinant and then take the absolute value. It's very easy to have negative determinants. ones next to absolute value symbols. It's the worst. <coughs> All right. 
Should get 23. Positive 23. Negative if you didn't apply absolute value yet. That's good. All right, the recording didn't work for some reason. I don't know what happened. I swear I hit the button.